So guys, can we have a round of applause for you, please for Nathan Channer, founder. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. I'm an avid listener of your podcast. Oh, thanks, and, mate. Um, the first line that you always open up with is, how did you get your job? So <laughs> I'm going to ask you that same question, if you don't mind. How did you get your job? Yeah, um, so I just kind of fell into it. Um, it's funny, you know, I look, I've been doing this for five years now, and I, and I look at all these people that, that want to start a business, and they have all these crazy wild dreams of raising capital and building these big businesses. and. With, for me, I started Founder because no one would give me a job. Um, <laughs> I, I have, I, uh, s my first uh, professional job was in IT support at, uh, an, accounting, um, at, a, at a, an accounting firm. And then um, I moved across and uh, started working at uh, a travel company called Intrepid Travel. And um, I did a master's of marketing and still no one would hire me um, to do marketing. So I saw there was an opportunity to um, kind of disrupt the publishing space, creating a digital magazine. And uh, at the time I was kind of interested and curious around entrepreneurship and business. And I thought, uh, what better way than to, to create this magazine around business and, and everything that I wanted to learn and read because I saw there was a gap in the marketplace uh, to produce content around uh, you know, entrepreneurship and business for more kind of early stage founders and aspiring founders. And um, I just started it on the side. Um, and actually, I remember actually taking that magazine, like the first edition on the iPad, and actually just taking it to job interviews mm. and still no one would hire me. <laughs> um, and then, you know, after a couple of months, it was pretty, pretty clear to me what, what I wanted to do and, and you know, how I was gonna grow this thing. And uh, yeah, the rest is kind of history. Mm -hmm. um, so you're talking about how you can grow it then. So how did you get some of the early wins on the board? Yeah, so the blessing, you know, starting a magazine is a blessing and a curse. The blessing was that I didn't know it at the time, but a magazine has a tremendous amount of authority when you talk about like building a men like you know Steve was talking about building a media based company or media media building, building out media properties having a magazine is is tremendous for influence mm. and i just kind of stumbled across that and you know if you wanted to start a magazine today like you know a lot of people would say you were stupid same back then a lot of people told me i was stupid but i was really naive right and and you know, I didn't have any money either, so I kind of had to be super resourceful. So to answer your question, I worked out very quickly that you know, having a magazine is amazing for getting cut through and, and, and actually getting in the door and getting in front of people. And um, the, the first early win was I got an interview with Sir Richard Branson, and that was for issue number eight, but I pitched him for issue number four, like when I was four months in, and uh, I pitched, I'll never forget, like, you know, I, um, I was, you know, at my, still at my day job and I was like at a share house with one of my mates in McLeod. Like it was like an old house and it was like really echoey. I was paying like 500 bucks a month to live there with just me and my friend. It's like, <laughs> like it was amazing. And, and I never forget, it was like late at night. I've been like, I've, I track back, you know, the head of Richard Branson's PR and you know I remember telling my friend that I was living with at the time like be quiet because I'm gonna go pitch Richard Branson so I run to my room <laughs> and and because I, I like I just called her up and um, yeah I, I'll never forget I, I just was like stumbling and I was so nervous and you know I, I gave her my pitch and she said like look please understand like we get these requests like you know at least 10 times a day um, like shoot me an email, I, I promise I'll at least get back to you. Um, so I shot her a really good email and, and, uh, and then yeah, he ended up saying yes and we did that interview and that, that was a really big win because I took that interview and I gave it away for free. I gave that particular magazine edition away for free and that was something that I learned that when you're building any kind of brand or building an audience, if you want to build that audience, you want to lead with something that's really good that you could easily charge for, but if you give it away for free and, and put it out there, you know, 
you can do a few few things. One, you can provide value up front and you can build your audience. But two, you know, with that magazine and having Richard Branson on the front cover of a brand that nobody's ever heard of, it's tremendously powerful for building influence. Mm. And um, yeah, that was definitely a big win. Another big win was, you know, it, I, I just was lucky that I they stumbled across the business model of like, selling recurring subscriptions and that just kept building and it was just building 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 you know a lot of people when they start a business they don't think oh okay i'm just going to sell subscription um like i'll sell so off a subscription and and that's been that was really powerful and still is today i'm very very passionate about uh recurring revenue yeah. um, so those were a few early wins and then um yeah, I can tell you more, but as time went on. I want to talk a little bit about kind of your mindset as a founder. And have you always had that like thinking big mentality? So obviously you're going after nah. the likes of Branson. How did, yeah, how do you? Nah, so like right now, my, my thinking big is like, I want to build a household name entrepreneurial brand with tens of millions of people consuming our content every single week. Right now it's in the millions. Uh, back then, um, you know, I, my, my, my dream was just to be able to make enough money so I could leave my job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, even though I was pitching the likes of Richard Branson. Now, how that's developed over time is purely by association. So, you know, they say like it's kind of a cliche quote, but you're the average of the five people that you spend most of your time with. That is, that couldn't be like further from the truth. So. I hang out with people that have built, you know, products or companies that, you know, have impacted hundreds of millions of people on a yearly basis. Um, you know, or people that build hundred million dollar companies or 300 or half a billion dollar companies. Um, and I am fortunate that I get to speak to some of those people through, you know, the founder podcast and, and just by pure association of speaking to these people, hanging out with these people, I'm forced to level up with my thinking. Mm. I, I'm embarrassed by how small my dreams are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think the more you, you do that kind of stuff, it just, uh, you know, really pushes you to think big. So it's something that's definitely evolved over time for me. Um, a big game changer was when I did my first trip to the States. So I did my first trip to the States. Uh, so I started Founder in March 2013. I left my day job and built up the recurring revenue so I could just pay myself a small uh, wage and pay the bills and scrape by and, and still cover operating costs around mid 2014. And then I went to the States around early 2015. And I'd never been to the States before, but the, the culture and mindset over there is just really incredible. And um, I spent a bit of time in you know Silicon Valley and spent a bit of time in York and caught up with some really incredible people, uh, also in LA as well. And um, the way that people think over there, they just think so big and it's, it's incredibly inspiring. And that I never forget, because when I came back after that US trip, that's when I really start to really start to get some really good traction with Founder. And um, yeah, that, that was a big game changer. So that's one thing just, just association. Mm -hmm. That's that's how that's how you cultivate your ability to think big, mm -hmm. and 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 that fearlessness that you can achieve anything. And mm -hmm. and once you start to get those wins, um, you start to actually you know see it come to life, mm -hmm. and it's it's an incredible thing. Mm -hmm. And you talk a lot about those founders that you've been able to share time with, yeah. and they're all very generous on the podcast with their experiences and everything else. Yeah. And what are the most common traits from those people? Obviously, thinking big is one, but what's the most common thing between all of those people, would you say? Oh, uh, look, it's hard to say. I've, I've, I've spoken to such a diverse range of people from all walks of life, but it's, I think it's just sheer grit and determination. and and the fact of never giving up and wanting it bad enough. You know, there's a very big difference between people that build a successful business and don't. And I think one of the biggest things is people just aren't prepared to, to do the work. Most people aren't prepared to do the work. Most people aren't prepared to just go through the low times because building a business is so ridiculously hard. Um, you have so many highs and you have so many lows. The highs are amazing, but the lows are the worst ever. And, you know, these people just have been able to push through mm -hmm. and they've been able to also, 
you know, another common thing is they've been able to build great teams. Mm. You know, you know, you look at me and, and I'm, you're speaking to me uh, about my accomplishments, but they're not really my accomplishments. They're, but you, you know, seem to ask that quite a lot as well. So on the podcast, I've noticed yeah. that you're obviously you're looking for that advice from some of those founders about how to scale and how to build teams. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. something that you're going through a challenge for at the moment. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, um, you know, like, like I said, like you build like a very, very big company or something of true worth and value and significance through having a great team. Mm. There's no other way about it. Mm. You can't do it off your own bat. Mm. I think you can build a business maybe to a million bucks or a couple of million, like pushing it max by yourself. But once you wanna get past that, you, you really need to develop a keen eye and skill set for identifying talent, mm. recruiting talent, fostering talent, mm -hmm. and really allowing people to do their best work at your company mm. and really fostering that team. So that's definitely something that is a common thing that a lot of people don't think about. Like, mm. you know, like I said, we're saying like, what you guys see that the accomplishments now of founder is not a reflection of just my work. It's a reflection of our team's work. And we have an incredible team, which mm. is, you know, that's how you can scale is, is through hiring tremendously just talented people. Mm. And, you know, it, it's really tough. And, uh, I could I could talk for days yeah, like sure. uh, around around how to do this, but you know obviously when it comes to hiring great people, you want people that are I think super hungry. Um, you want you want to create an organisation and environment where they can do their best work. I think you know getting paid is one thing, but being able to fall in love with the work is another thing. You need to be able to give people a sense of ownership. I think that's really, really important. Um, you don't want to micromanage people. You want to have a great working environment, a great culture. And you know, one thing that, uh, that I've found really powerful uh, uh, to really attract great talent to want to join Founder is our vision. You can use your vision for what you want to build as a tool to motivate your team and then also attract great talent. Mm -hmm. Like we, like I, I say this not sparingly, but like I truly believe that the work that we're doing at Founder has the potential and the, our content, everything we put out, we have the potential to, to create like the next Elon Musk mm. to like shape the future of our generation because all these young kids, that they're, they're all fo like, you know, it's amazing. Like they, when they go to learn or they want to learn about entrepreneurship or they, you know, they have a stumbling block and they, and they, you know, type in Google, they're finding an article from Founder, they're listening to a podcast, they're watching one of our videos, they're doing one of our courses. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be a part of that, that's mm -hmm. pretty exciting. And they're the kind of things that you need to think about. And yeah, that, that's what you need to focus on when you're scaling and building your team. Yeah. Cool. So let's go back to some of those those darker days then that you were talking about. And yeah. What were some of those low mo moments and how did you get past those? Yeah. So um, one in particular, and I think we talked about this before, was when I was sued for trademark infringement uh, by one of the, at the time, biggest uh, business magazines at the States. Um, their print arm has actually gone under, gone under now and uh, they don't exist anymore. Um, and it's quite funny because, uh, you know, maybe about a year ago they wanted to uh, get in touch with me about a partnership. Uh, so it's funny how, you know, the tides can turn. But um, that was really, really tough times. Uh, you know, uh, I was, so first four months in, first business, uh, knew nothing, like didn't know anything, wasn't like, no, I had no idea what I was doing. And to receive a FedEx package in the mail that, uh, you know, you're being uh, served and you're to appear in uh, Dallas, Texas mm -hmm. um, on this date. Uh, and then you've got emails uh, from like, you know, lawyers doing lead gen mm -hmm. saying like, I know the judge, um, he used to mentor me, we've got to move fast and not knowing what to do. I had no money. Um, so I, I don't know what I was scared about in mm. retrospect, but it's actually a terrible feeling um, to, to have someone coming at you like that. Um, especially it's quite intimidating as well when it's a big company. So that was a really hard time for me. Um, I've had some other hard times, you know, in the past couple of years. We're on a really good trajectory path now with Founder and, and we're growing really, really like at a really good pace. But, 
you know, two years ago when I was trying to scale Founder, you know, when you want to go past, once you get to that seven figure mark or even, you know, multiple seven figures and you want to get to, you know, you know, past that and, and go north towards of, you know, building an eight mm. figure business and, you know, you, you start to build out your team. I think like that, that was a really tough time where I didn't know what I was doing. Like, you know, we got good at selling, you know, one product or, or two products, but how do you get more customers? How do you sell more to existing customers? How do you get your marketing channels dialed in? How do you work out your business model? Like, you know, I don't think we'd really solidified our business model just yet. Like, you know, we had the magazine on the front end and I, you know, we launched this course and we were just testing the courses thing and we didn't really know. and. Yeah, it was really difficult. I didn't know how to, you know, like hire great people mm -hmm. and not to say I didn't, but like, you know, I've gone mm -hmm. through some things where, you know, I've had to let some people go and mm -hmm. all these other things and, you know, and you know, spending money and really wasting it, mm -hmm. you know, on all sorts of marketing channels and yeah, like, you know, not, it just, just things were a mess. And, and, you know, I was really frustrated for, for at least a good year just trying to work out, maybe even 18 months, just trying to work out a couple of years ago, just trying to work out how do I take this thing to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, that, 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 that can be really tough because you don't, you know, oh, there we go. <laughs> and then there was light. Hi guys, welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. So we're gonna just carry on where we left off pretty much. So um, Nathan, you're super passionate about building a powerhouse brand and you've got some, I mean, so many insights there as to how you can go about doing that. Can you just share a little bit about how you went about turning your brand into a powerhouse brand? Yeah, 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 sure thing. You guys can hear me okay, yeah? Yeah, yep, that's right. Um, I think so. Yeah, so I, I am, yeah, I am particularly passionate about building brands from scratch, um, especially if you've got no money. Um, so, you know, there's three key components that, that I believe um, are the key elements and ingredients for building any brand, especially online. The first one is having a great product. Um, you, look at, you look at all the, the companies that are winning and that have great brands, they tend to be the ones with the most superior products. Like if you wanna win in business, you have to work towards having the most superior product in the marketplace. And that kind of goes without saying, but for some people they try and cut corners there. So that's number one. So for us at Founder, it's our content. Anything that you see us put out, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a video, whether it's a blog post, whether it's one of our courses, whether it's one of our magazines, a book, you name it, anything we put out is a very, very strong product and it's good. The second key component is, and this is a form of unique, like a USP, unique selling proposition in of itself to differentiate yourself is great design. So I'm very, very passionate about, about having great design in whatever you put out there. So if you look at all the top startups, um, one thing that is very, very common is they all have tremendous design. Like it just goes without saying. And, and the thing, the cool thing is with design is because of technology nowadays, you can actually get like incredible design at extremely low cost. Like it's, you don't have to go to these ridiculously expensive agencies locally. You can go to like a website like behance.com or dribble.com. You can find like an amazing designer from Eastern Europe and you can use like, obviously you can take advantage of, you know, the economy and, and, and you know, pay somebody like a really cost affordable rate here in Australia or US or whatever and, and find somebody in Eastern Europe and you can get incredible design work. And I think that is so important. So if you look at anything we put out there from Founder, the design is impeccable. It's really, really strong. And when it comes to great design, the things that I think about is it has to be cool, it has to be funky, it has to be fresh. And anything that we put out there, we want people to see it if they're glancing or and, and they'll take a second look. It's gotta be really cool. And and you can see that. And that and that's something that can be achieved when you're starting from scratch with not much money. Obviously the great product, you've got to build a great product. And then the third one, which I'm I think is really important as well, which we've really put on steroids at Founder, is having ambassadors for your brand. Now it doesn't actually have to be kind of you know, you've got to deal with them, but you need to be able to align yourself with them in some way, shape or form. So we don't have 
any official ambassadors per se for Founder, but we treat the people that are the rock stars of our industry in the entrepreneurship and business space. We you know, get them on the front covers of our magazine and some of them we have testimonials from and we put everywhere, all over our website. Like if you go to the homepage of founder.com, you'll see a testimonial from Gary Vanyachuk, Damon John, Marie Folio, all very well known people in the industry, in the space, that people are just like, wow, these guys must be legit. You know, you, we, you see the founder covers, like we use those to show these people as almost ambassadors for the brand. So if you can really elevate your credibility and authority, that's how you start to really cultivate and develop an amazing brand. And that's really all it is in those three simple key steps. And this all can be achieved even when you're just starting out. The thing you just have to remember is you have to be prepared to spend that little bit extra in investing the time in creating a great brand at the start. So I'll never forget when I first, you know, was trying to design the first edition of the magazine. And it was ridiculous. I'm telling you guys this even right now, it was ridiculous. I found the first designer and I got him to design up the whole magazine edition and it cost 200 bucks. And I was just like, ooh, that's a bit of money. And I dropped the 200 bucks. And this is like, you know, five years ago, I know what I was thinking, you know, you didn't have much money. And then I found this other designer who was just a hundred times better than the first designer we worked with. And I, and I was just about to launch the magazine with you know what the first designer gave me that I paid 200 bucks for, for the magazine edition. And I found this second designer, incredible guy, and I spoke to him and, and I showed him what we'd had. And I said, yeah, like, um, what do you think of this? And you know, I said, you know, how much is it gonna cost for you to design our magazine every month? And, and he's like, it's gonna cost you about 600 bucks. And I was just like, man, there is no way in hell I'm, I can afford that or pay that. As ridiculous at the time, but I was just like, he was just like, and I'll never forget, this is like one of the best lessons that I learned about branding. He said to me, Nathan, I know it might seem like a lot of money to you um, and you know, like it's probably out of your budget, but if you can, Invest in design early on when you're starting your business or building your startup at the early stages or at the very start. It might, you might not see it and you might not feel it right now, but it pays its weight in, in gold over time and you really see those benefits in the long run. Mm -hmm. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Mm -hmm. So those three things I told you you might feel like a little, you might have to spend that little bit extra, you know, that few hundred bucks here and there, but it really is worth it and it does pay its weight in gold. Did, did you go with that guy with the 600? Of course, yeah. man. Like, I went to his <laughs> wedding. He's our art director now. Like, cool. he still does every single magazine edition. He's done, like, most of the stuff we put out there. So, Amazing. yeah, it's, uh, it's a good one. Yeah, and from the first talk that you, you shared with us as well, you talked a lot about learning off other people that have been there and done that before, and that's helped you also grow the brand. Um, can you shed a little bit of light on that for us, please? Yeah, so one thing um, that I'm pretty obsessed about um, is obviously growing founder, and I have some pretty big, uh, we have, we have a, 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 a tremendously large vision for, for what I believe founder can be. Um, and you know, to get there, that 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 requires taking things to the next level, and and continuously taking things to the next level and scaling. So one thing that you know I've found from my experience that 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 helps me get there is just by the quality of, of like the quality of advice that, that that comes to me and that I get and that I soak up. So. I've been very, very lucky along the way to get really, really good advice, you know, from where I am now, um, all the way up, you know, to when, back when I started. Um, and I, I, I've always been, I, I would say kind of a, a very passionate person if I get obsessed with something. So if I meet somebody that, you know, perhaps I can help them and they can help me, um, 
I, 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 I somehow, you know, tend to get a lot from that, that interaction. So where I'm going with this is, you know, I think one of the biggest hacks there is when it comes to, and I don't like to say this, like, you know, building a successful business is finding somebody that's done what you want to do and just finding out all the things that are ahead from them and, and just learning from them. Um, because, you know, everything that you want to do right now has probably been done by somebody else before. Mm -hmm. Now, you can get that advice from really kind of three different ways. Um, one, you can pay for it, which is something that I'm more than happy to do. And I, I, I continually double down on paying for advice, whether that's paying for your mentors, paying for coaching, jumping on something like a service like clarity.fm. And if you want to find a lead generation expert, you can find so many on there and you can pay them, you know, $10 a minute. You speak to them for half an hour, $300, and you can know the best stuff that that person knows from generating millions of leads uh, in the past couple of years for their company. So, you know, that's the first thing. You have to be prepared to respect that person's time if they are going to give it to you. And, you know, if they want to be paid, pay them. You know, make that investment in yourself. You know, the, you know, the more that you level up and, and invest in your own knowledge and mindset and, you know, spend that time, the faster you can grow your company. The growth of your company is a reflection of you as a founder and how much you know and how much you're learning. I know that sounds kind of basic and, and obvious, but if you really step outside of that, you know, if you just keep investing and double downing on investing in yourself, then of course you, you, you're stacking the deck in your favor to be able to grow your company. Um, the second thing is really to, to network and, and meet people. Um, and you know, I always try and serve first and ask later. I think that's really incredible when you're looking to, to meet people um, and you perhaps want to connect with somebody. Uh, you, you just you know, put yourself out there. Like for example, I'm sure there's some things that I could share with Steve right now that you know, if, I mean, I'm sure there's, I know there's some things that he, he can help me with mm. around, you know, backlinks and, and, and driving our organic traffic with founders. So, you know, I will always look to serve first. And I think that's a really, really healthy way to build a relationship. And then, yeah, this, the third thing that you want to be doing around getting great advice is joining groups like EO. Um, you know, that's how, you know, I've become, get to know Kim much better and, and or joining mastermind groups. And there's, there's plenty of them out there and, and just, having that accountability from just really smart people or people at the same level of the journey that you're at or maybe even a little bit further, excuse me, uh, uh, like a little bit ahead, you know, it just, it's really, really powerful. And just that accountability when you've got that cadence of catching up with that group once a month and being able to say, yeah, this is what's happening now. Imagine being able to go to that group and say, yeah, I've done, I've done nothing, you know, mm -hmm. like, Having that and just being inspired by others and having that cadence of catching up with that group is tremendously powerful. So they're the three things when I think that, that I'm always focused on that when it comes to having quality advice and always being fed that quality advice and, and getting people to always test my assumptions and my strategies and looking forward on, on, on tweaking the business model, adding this line of you know, product or, or turning this cost center into a profit center or, or whatever, it, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Um I love to hear this passion. It's absolutely fantastic. We're running out of time a little bit for just this little interval here, this little yeah, session sure. that we have now, but we're going to go to the Q&A in a second, but I'm just going to ask you one question here now. Um, you're very passionate about social as well, yeah. and um, Gary Vee was somebody who you looked up to for the advice on, on obviously growing through social. Yep. Can you shed some light on that for our audience this evening as well, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, look, I, I've learned a lot from Gary um, from, from, from ch chatting with him and, and catching up with him and, and um, you know, just the interviews and stuff. And, and you know, when you want to when, when you want to build a brand, like a, like a big powerhouse brand, I think one thing he taught me is you need to conquer all the channels. You can't, can't just conquer one. Um, and in saying that, you know, if you're starting from scratch, you need to just focus on one channel. There's too many channels. You can only focus on one at a time. So for Founder, we started with Instagram. We absolutely destroyed that channel. How did I work out how to master that channel? It's a simple, simple concept. This is how 
I master every single social channel. You guys watch what I'm gonna do, well, our, I'm gonna drive and, and our, our, my team's gonna help and we're gonna do with our YouTube channel, we'll get that to 100,000 subscribers in six months or less. So the, the concept of, of growth hacking any social channel is the first thing you need to do is, is a concept of, of modeling, which, which comes from Tony Robbins, like success leaves clues. So you look at you know, all the channels in your space, like let's say, we, let's say we want to master Instagram, and let's say we run a physical product, we have a physical product-based business. You want to study the top 10 to 20 Instagram channels that are absolutely killing it on Instagram, that, 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 have, that sell physical products and they have a tremendous brand. And you wanna study them really intently, like what kind of content are they posting? How often are they posting? How often are they posting on their stories? How often are they doing their calls to action? Um, you know, how are they growing? Who are the influencers they are working with? All these different things. That's the first thing you wanna do. The second thing you wanna do is you wanna buy every single course out there from people that are legit practitioners. These are people that have done it with their own business. They don't just say they're an expert and they're a guru because they say they are. They've actually built legitimate businesses themselves, mastering that particular channel. That's the second thing you wanna do and you wanna soak up as much as you can. And then the, the last thing you wanna do is just be super consistent. I think, you know, it really comes down to mastering any channel is high quality content on a consistent basis equals like high quality content on a consistent basis times consistency. So high quality content times consistency equals influence. So if you just do it relentlessly, like you pump out like we have for the past three years, if we just pumped out great content on our Instagram channel and it's like almost 1.5 million followers in three years, if we just did that, we might not be at 1.5, but we'd at least be in the hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. So that's what you really need to do. Those top three things, just you know, model who the best are at it and focus on that, just that one channel. Um, don't worry about any others. You know, just soak up as much knowledge as you can, buy the courses, read the blog posts, and you know, then the next thing is just be super consistent with the content you're putting out there, and that's half the game. And then you move on to the next one, and then, you know, you just go one at a time and just be really, really relentless on just mastering that one channel. And that's, that's all I've really done when it comes to social. We did it first with Instagram, then we did it with podcasts, then we did it with Facebook. Now we're going to do it with YouTube and we're focusing on blogging. We haven't mastered that yet, blogging and organic and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I see, you know, that's exactly what we're doing with YouTube. No, no shortcuts. Awesome answer. So thank you very much. Guys, can we have a round of applause for Nathan Chan of Founder Magazine? Thank you very much, Nathan.